So hello everybody and welcome back to five minutes of cardio time. Today I want to address a problem that I frequently see when somebody starts with echocardiography. They sometimes turn on the color doggler, <clears throat> try to interrogate the mitral valve and see a huge jet or no jet and are not really able to interpret what they are seeing just because of wrong settings. So uh, it's, it's important to understand that doubler, doppler especially color doppler is not plug and play. There are usually some useful settings stored in the machine, but Doppler always needs some adjustment for physical reasons. Reasons. So your Doppler settings basically depend on the question that you have, what you want to interrogate. So I want to show you how to adjust the Doppler setting that you see your optimal mitral valve jet. It's important to know that Doppler shows you velocities and not a valvular insufficiency. It shows you velocity of blood cells. Strong signals on your machine are still gray. Weak signals like blood is displayed in color. Every machine tries to suppress low velocity signals on your color Doppler, but this suppression depends on your manufacturer and has a different algorithm in each machine. So what about the two T gain. The gain is always the volume, like the volume of your radio. If you turn on the volume, you get a lot of signal. If you turn it down, the signal is weak. Yeah? So if you turn up the gain, the 2D gain, the grayscale gain of your machine, you will see a lot of gray image. Yeah? So the blood will be gray as well. The myocardium will be very bright. The blood will be gray. And it's important to know that gray pixels cannot be colored. So the more grayish the image is, the, the, uh, the, uh, the worse the color is on your, on your image. Yeah? So always try to adjust the gain that you see the bl blood in black and the myocardium in gray. Okay. So this is a typical color Doppler image. What you can see here is, of course, the two-dimensional grayscale image superimposed by the color Doppler. This is the color box. So this is the region where your blood is interrogated for velocities. On the right side of the image, you see your color map. The color map tells you, and this is the most frequent setting on the ultrasound machines, that blue means blood is flowing away from the transducer, and red means blood is flowing towards the transducer. There are, of course, some shades of red and blue to give you a semi-quantitative impression of the velocity. What is really important is this number here on the top and the bottom. There's the so-called Nyquist limit. The Nyquist limit here is set on, on approximately one meter per second, exactly on 98.6 centimeters per second. So this is something that you have to focus on when you're adjusting your Doppler, your color Doppler. So on the right side, you'll see two images of, uh, of a mitral recharge. The upper image shows you a rather mild mitral regurgitation. The lower image, I would say a moderate mitral regurgitation. Yeah. So the mitral regurgitation is usually um, graded by the area the jet covers in relation to the area of the left atrium. There is not a single cutoff. So the cutoff depends on the literature you're referring to, yeah. mostly it's um, interpreted as mild if it covers about 25, up to 25% of the left atrial area. And if it covers more than 50% of the left atrial area, then it's graded as severe mitral research. But you have to be very cautious. The jet is not only a two-dimensional thing, it's three-dimensional. So it also goes into or outside your image. Yeah? and what is also important that the jet side size is dependent on your settings of your Nyquist limit, the number that I was referring to on the last slide. Yeah. So if your 
PRF setting is too low. So if the Nyquist limit is too low, too low, yeah, then the jet will appear much larger than it really is. If you want to adjust your Nyquist limit here, then you have to adjust the so-called pulse repetition frequency or PRF on your machine. So if you turn the PRF up, then you get a higher Nyquist limit. If you turn it down, then you get a lower Nyquist limit. Yeah? The second thing is the color gain. I told you, if you turn on the gain of, the, of your, your grayscale image, the whole image will be grayish. If you turn up the, the gain of your color Doppler, then you will see much more color than you want to see. Uh, additionally, the size of the jet or the signal of your color Doppler depends of, on the distance between the structure you're interrogating and the transducer. So if you're examining a large breed dog, your color signal will be much weaker than in a small breed dog. It's important that your Nyquist limit setting should always be set between 0 0.9 and 1.2 meters per second. So if it's lower, turn on, turn up uh, the pulse repetition frequency. The PRF really and the Nyquist limit affects the interpretation of the image. So look at these images. These are images obtained from the same dog. So it's always the same dog. On the left image, you get a lot of color, right? Across the mitral valve. On the middle, video it's a little bit less but you still can assume maybe there is a moderate mitral recharge yeah you don't really see it yeah? and on the right image you see that there's just a very very little mitral recharge so this is I would show it to you this is the mitral recharge here yeah and if you compare the PRF settings on the left image the Nyquist limit is just 15 centimeters per second on the middle image is 38 and on the right is 91 meet, uh, centimeters per second. So the right one has the correct setting of your PRF. Yeah. Sometimes you can turn on the PRF to an extent that gives you a high Nyquist limit. This happens if you are using a, a low frequency, a high frequency transducer. So if you're using a 10 megahertz transducer in a Great Dane then it will be hard to get a Nyquist limit of 0 0.9 meters per second. If you use the same transducer in a cat, it will be much easier. So the Nyquist limit depends on your PRF setting. It depends on the frequency of your probe and the imaging depth. Yeah? So if you want to achieve a high Nyquist limit in a Great Dane, you must use a very low frequency transducer. Yeah. What about the probe frequency? The probe frequency also um, affects the size of the jet somehow. Why? Because if you use a high frequency probe uh, compared to a low frequency probe, the high frequency probe will probably give you a lower signal than the low frequency probe. Yeah. On the left hand side, you see a dog. It's essentially the same dog like on the right hand side. And they used a, a 4 to 12 megahertz transducer, so a high frequency transducer. As you can see, the highest Nyquist limit I could achieve is 0 0.7 meters per second. So it's basically not high enough. Yeah. So this is the color that we can see here. Yeah. Then I used a low frequency probe transducer, it's a 1 to 5 megahertz transducer in the same animal. I turned on the Nyquist limit up to uh, the PRF so that the Nyquist then, uh, limit ended up at approximately 1 meters per second. And you see there's much more color here. Yeah? So as a rule of thumb, if you want to see more color or if you can't achieve a Nyquist limit, of 0 0.9 to 1.2 meters per second with a given transducer, then choose a transducer with a lower frequency. This is the same in an apical view. So the same dog, 
on the left hand side you got the high frequency probe on the right hand side a low frequency probe on the left side the Nyquist limit the maximum Nyquist limit I could achieve was uh, 67 centimeters per second on the right hand side it was 92 or 93 centimeters per second on the right side you see much more color than on the left side yeah. what about the color game on the left side and then the right side you see the same dog yeah on the left side I used a very high color gain setting on the right side the settings are correct so what I did is I, uh, from the left side to the right side, I lowered the color gain until there were no color speckles around the jet. So this is something that you simply have to try out. Yeah. What about the position of the probe? I told you that the jet is a three-dimensional thing. So by simply twisting or tilting, the transducer sliding a little bit you can get a completely different image of your jet yeah so if you look at these two videos it's the same dog yeah with a side slightly different uh, view so on the left side I simply tilted the cable a little bit yeah and you see much more color on the left side compared to the right side even though all other settings are the same yeah, this is just because the jet is a little bit oblique. And what is also important, if you see an MR, a heavy MR in a dog, don't forget to interrogate all the other structures as well. Yeah? What you can see here, particularly, is an additional atrial septal defect, maybe a secondary one due to rupture of the intraatrial septum. If I just had interrogated the mitral valve, I would have missed this ASD, which is important. So if you find the source of a hard murmur with your color Doppler, don't forget to interrogate all other structures. Yeah? So summarizing, adjust the size of your color window according to the structure you want to see. So it doesn't make sense to have a color box that's much larger than the left atrium. Yeah? It lowers the frame rate and doesn't give you much more, um, much more information. Try to get the PRF setting right. So the Nyquist limit should always be between 0 0.9 and 1.2 meters per second. If this is not possible, choose a transducer with a lower frequency. Always adjust the color gain so that you get a clear jet without all the mosaic uh, around it. Always interrogate your mitral valve at different angles and from different views to get a good estimate of uh, the size of the jet. And if you're doing a murmur hunt, don't forget to perform a complete exam just because you already found uh, mitral uh, research. And which is what is most, in, most important, always think of the pathophysiology. If you notice a massive volume overload of the left heart and you think that the, M, the mitral research is responsible, there has to be a, 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 a massive mitral research. So if you see a heavy left-sided volume overload with a very small mitral, a tiny mitral jet, then the mitral research won't be responsible for this huge volume overload. Yeah. If you are still sure because you see massive changes of the valve according to your two-dimensional in image, then take into consideration that your settings might be wrong. So everything, the whole picture has to fit together. Okay, enjoy practicing and see you back in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye.